going into details of this callback group level interface, let's first have a look on how to prioritize the critical path in our reference system. Ian has shown it before, that's going here from the two LIDARs through the transformer for the fusion mode, ray ground filter, Euclidean cluster detector to object collision estimator. We neglect the behavior planner, the remaining part because uh, that runs here with the cyclic scheme already, but focus here on this path. And the latency is measured along both possible paths. So the older message defines the latency um, between the LIDARs and the object collision estimator. And the first stop is that we have to think how to optimally map the nodes and the executors for those nodes um, to be able to um, optimize the latency. That's a proposal that I started with. Um, you may later also play around with the reference system and try your own configurations. So I created actually four executors. And in the first step, just single threaded executors. So the first one runs the node here, which um, publishes the first messages and the transformer node. The second one doing the same for the rear part. And then a third executor going this inner chain, point cloud, fusion, ray ground filter, Euclidean cluster detector, the object collision estimator. And all other nodes um, have been put to a fourth executor, the non-critical ones. And for this talk, I really focus on the latency, not on memory CPU, that's, that's a separate topic. Well, um, Andre already uh, gave some hints on how to do such priorizations. Let's have a brief look on how this is organized in Linux. Of course, this depends on your operating system. So in Linux, um, there's a differentiation between the so-called user priorities, which are under the completely fair scheduler or scat other um, since Linux 2.6.23. Uh, and they are configured by these nice values. So you have a, a function to set the nice level varying between plus 19 and minus 20. You have to note the lower the value, the higher the priority. And then we have the real-time priorities, which are uh, managed by two schedulers, the FIFO scheduler, the round robin, and this, um, this round robin scheme, the FIFO scheme run in each level that you can configure there. So if, um, up to 99 levels that you can configure, that's called the real-time priorities going from one to 99 and both together are mapped to a scale here from zero to 139. Actually the, the SCAD FIFO and the SCAD round robin are taken from the POSIX standard. So that's part of the POSIX already. Uh, whereas this get upper is, is a Linux specific implementation. There are even more under this get upper, um, get batch, get idle, that, that goes to Peter. They, they are for less, um, less prioritized role, uh, the workload. What you have also to note, um, there is a concept in Linux called real time throttling, which ensures that the real time tasks, so here cannot take the whole CPU and make the system hang. And you can configure this per default. It's ensured that the user prioritized tasks or threats get 50 milliseconds per second. If you start a new executable um, with its threats that goes gets the nice value zero, which makes um, on this uh, full priority scale the level 19. For example, your soft interrupt threats run most at priority 19, so real time priority 50. And uh, one example for the micro, uh, for for the highest priority are the migration threads, so the threads on each CPU um, that decide when to move threads between different CPU cores. This is how this looks like in Linux um, on the command line. If you do a psx and then format and include here pre, rt prior, and nice, you see here those three levels that I've just mentioned. So here's this full scale. Here you see one example of this migration threads. So real time priority 99, overall priority 139. Here's the example for the nice values. So some that have been configured to the highest priority in the, in the user level priorities. And that's how I did it in, in um, the implementation that you'll also find in our main line. Here I, I put it in, in one big function, actually in the reference implementation is factored out in some nicer functions. So I create here a single thread executor, add a node to it, add some more nodes, and then I create a thread using the C++ standard API. And here call a function from 
um, 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 Linux um, operating system function called set priority. It's called prior process, but actually changes the priority of the thread only if I call here this get TID, so thread ID, and not get PID for the process ID. So don't, yeah, don't, don't be confused. It says process here, but actually it only ch changes the, the thread um, nice level. And this allows me, for example, to slightly elevate the priority of blip thread, and then I call execute or spin on the single thread executor, which ensures that this executor has a higher priority. And then I can do the same for other threads and other executors, and at the end, just wait for them to complete. So until um, RC or CPP OK says, OK, we want to shut down. And then by, by the join, it's ensured that the main thread waits for all of these executor threads to return. On the right hand side, if you really have very critical tasks and you want to go into the retemporary station, um, probably with SCAD FIFO, which would be one possibility also uh, for, for the deadline management asked before. Um, you have to get the so-called native handle, which gives you a handle um, from a Sibasta set according to the POSIX standard. And then that's our POSIX P thread gets SCAD parameters. You filter some structs, the scheduler parameters and the policy. Then you can change here the priority, for example, to 20. So probably not above the, the interrupts. And uh, by P thread, set chat parameters, you can again um, apply um, the changes from these structs that have been put before. And that is the same, you will, will just wait for it. That's not a nice API um, and it's not immediately possible for the multi-threaded executor because there the threads are created in the multi-threaded executor class, but later uh, Jung will show a nice API uh, for, from a, let's say, framework on top of RCL CPP. So you can look forward to his talk about PCAS. Now that's how I configured the test system. As said, you'll find it uh, in the real-time working group organization on GitHub. So I um, slightly elevated those three threads here together, whereas um, the fourth one I slightly decreased. Why did I decrease it? Because we have uh, a couple of other threads from DBS, which I did not touch. And this ensures that the middle of the uh, threads have a higher priority than um, the executor thread here to ensure that the messages sent between those ones are not disturbed by or yeah, have a high priority than any um, callbacks here from the not from the nodes on the non-critical path. Um, you'll see our um, numbers differ slightly, which um, comes to two effects. First, um, some measurements have been taken with four CPUs, some have been taken with two CPUs only. And also um, I configured, or we have, we have different durations for the experiment. So these experiments here have been run over 60 seconds, which gives um, quite robust results, but you'll also see there are more outliers. So we see here on the right-hand side, first, the single threaded case. The static single thread, that's for example, really an exception you see on average better, but there are some outliers which by chance are worse than for the single threaded, which is not common. You see here the multi-threaded and you see the prioritized path. And what you can also see on average, um, it's very similar, but with the prioritized path, we strongly reduce the outlier. Now, what is the callback group of the executor? Michael already said it in his introduction, it's not another executor, but it's just the refinement of the existing API of the executor, which has been introduced with Galactic. So it's quite new, although the idea is quite old. What is the idea behind it? So inside a node, um, we observe that typically not all callbacks are, have the same priority. And especially if you have some control type node, I just call it here a motion control node, you might have a critical path where you want to ensure that this is really ex uh, executed with a, at the high frequency and with little latency, whereas other callbacks have less priority. This might be your normal parameter lifecycle services. Perhaps even the goal is of less priority. It's just important that the control loop runs um, timely enough. Um, Perhaps you have here some, some timeout detection mechanism or whatever to, to uh, um, rec recognize if there's no, no input coming. Um, so we think that this is a pattern that can be observed in many nodes. Of course, not all, but um, 
there might be cases where you have this pattern. And by refining the API of the executor to not allow to register whole nodes, but individual callback groups, we have now the possibility to assign parts of the node to one executor and the other one to the other executor, and then just use the normal operating mechanisms to prioritize them differently. And that's exactly what has been introduced with ROS to Galactic. So before Galactic, we had just two main functions, add node, remove node to register and deregister nodes from the executor. And now if you have possibility to add individual callbacks, there's still the possibility to add a node and um, the mechanism is so flexible that if you have assigned certain callback groups to one executor before and then call add node on a second executor, it will just take those callback groups that haven't been registered yet. So there are flags with each callback group that um, determine whether it's already registered with an executor or not. That's sort of an atomic variable to ensure that there are no, no races on that. And with that mechanism, you can very flexibly um, take out individual callback groups and assign it to a separate executor. There are also some, some functions here to exactly determine which are the callback groups that have been added manually, which are the ones that have been added automatically from this add um, node function. But yeah, that's a very special function. I don't expect that that is required very often. This has been added to the base class. And um, many executors and, and the C++ side just derive from this base class. So by this refinement, the new feature is, pos is um, available for single threaded executor, for multi-threaded executor, for static single executor, as well as for the upcoming new events executor. Again, a forward pointer to Alberto's talk later. Um, actually, we proposed this in the part of BOSS already two or three years ago, and um, Pedro, who was an intern at Open Robotics, and William did a great job. Um, thank you very much to you both who brought this main line for Galactic. Now, what can we do with this? We have here in our reference system one node type, the red ones here, which have a kind of or semantic. And this one here has actually two inputs, which go to different subscriptions, which are assigned to different callback groups. And we have now the possibility to ensure that only the really critical part, namely the subscription here to the rate ground builder is prioritized, whereas the other part, this Euclidean cluster settings, gets a low priority. So basically we use the callback group API to split here and assign the one callback group to this executor three, there's the other callback group is assigned to the executor four with this higher and ice level, so less priority. And the results are quite impressive. So you see here um, the maximum latency we observed in our one minute, uh, minute measurements was reduced significantly. Also the, the chitter on that level can be seen as very low. So by removing this one callback from, from the first three executors, we really gained uh, a big improvement on the latency. I've here now also plotted results from two CPUs. You see the multi-threaded here is even worse than the, than the single. That's just by the fact that we, there's too little computational resources. But still, you see here the big improvement, even in, during this high overload situation, um, by by this configuration, you exploiting the callback group mechanism. If you think the reference system is too much for me, I just want to point you that there is in the normal RIS2 examples also a demo examples, also a CPP CBG executor, um, which just consists of two nodes with two paths. Um, and on the possible, so, so you, we are sending your pings to one node and pongs back, and that, that on two topics. And um, the Pong node burns CPU cycles when it receives such a message. And um, that shows in a few lines of code how to um, configure the threads. Actually, here, the real time priority, uh, real -time priority you also get FIFO. That's a bit too much. It's, it's really just a demo. Um, if you're interested, just check it out. You'll find it in ROS2 examples. And this already concludes my talks. And now I'm looking forward to your questions. Thanks a lot, Ralph. And indeed, we have some. One is short and precise. What about get deadline? Yeah, all right. I missed that. Um, there, there are many more possibilities. And of course, if you change the operating system, if you get to go to 
QNX or uh, other solutions, um, there, there are different ones. Um, you will learn later now also from, from Jan about budget-based approaches here. So th that can all be combined because um, as said, it's really just a mechanism to, um, how to say, um, go more detailed inside a node, how you map this to the operating system is not defined and up to you as a developer. All right. The next question, is there a Rust API to declare data dependency or synchronization requirements for different callbacks? That's a very cool question. And you should await the Jan's talk on the RCSC executor for micros because this executor exactly features that mechanisms. All right. So Ralph, also please uh, answer the, the uh, incoming questions in the chat. And then we come to Alberto. Well, Alberto is a, a senior software engineer at iRobot. 